So we have a fish pond here. It's got some quite large fish in it. Um, it's really important when you feed your fish though, we really want to make sure that there's no food left over. Like if you look here, there's a whole bunch of food. It's really important that all the food is eaten in about 30 seconds, otherwise it just pollutes the water. And if you get extra nutrients in the water, you're just going to get more and more algae. It's going to be very, very hard to control the algae. So in this case, the water spills over. So you definitely wouldn't want to be feeding your fish any time in the proximity of when this waterfall feature goes on. Because I'm assuming most of the fish are in there. I know that there are some fish in here. Um, this is like so close to being awesome. So we're just going to whack a filter on it and um, get this underway. Now the filter that we put on is a gravel tray filter and it will take time to work. So we don't want to go thinking that we're going to put the filter on and the water's going to be clear anytime soon because we need all the good bacteria to establish in the pond um, before the bacteria starts competing with the algae. At the moment there's a lot of algae because the conditions are right for the algae and there's no bacteria to compete with it. So what I'm doing now is washing up some gravel for these gravel tub filters. We want to start with some nice clean gravel. Okay, the filters are surprisingly effective. So there's a manifold underneath here that draws the water down through the gravel. Just add a bit more gravel. And we put this on top. And this is easily cleaned as it collects any leaf litter or whatever. You pull this out and give it a clean. Um, you can just give it a hose, but it's best if it's cleaned with water that's actually removed from the pond. And then the gravel underneath, every quarter, it's good to um, just get it out, dump some water through it, stir it up, and um, clean the gravel in water that's actually removed from the pond. Because over time, the aim is for the pump to suck the water through, and then for the good bacteria to grow in the gravel, and the good bacteria that grows in the gravel should compete with the algae to help keep the water clear. And that will all take time. Wash gravel pretty much like rice. You want to get in there, churn it all up. And then once the water starts to fill up a bit, then you just tip off the water. You basically keep repeating this process until the water tips off quite clear. So you churn it all up with your hand. And you really want to get it quite clear. There's nothing worse than starting off with dirty gravel. Now the other thing is that once the gravel is in the aquarium or in the filter, you must never clean the gravel with tap water. Because tap water contains chlorine, and the good bacteria that grows in the gravel is going to get killed um, by the chlorine and the hormone. And the thing with doing that is that you can do it a few times and not have a problem, and then you can do it once and have a massive problem because the um, level of chlorine and chlorine is going to be The first tray filter is now on. The tray filter is there, and the pump is facing that way. And you can very clearly see the water ripping around here. Now, what this is already doing is starting to create what's called kinetic energy. Now, kinetic energy is where you use the movement of the water to create the movement of the water. Now, the water is going to get sucked down through that big tray filter. So this is going to need checking pretty much daily at the start because there's so much crap in the bottom of this pond that hydrogen sulfide is a risk. So I'll put some poly filter in here. And also, um, it's very likely to clog up. So there's a mat on top of the tray filter. We're going to want to get that out and clean it very regularly until all this sludge has um, been filtered through. Now, as you can see, um, turning that pump on, is really stirring all the sludge up in the pond. And the next thing I'm going to do is add some water cleanser. Now what water cleanser is, is these little balls are called hydrocarbon balls. And what we do is just throw them in the pond, and then these, the presence of the hydrocarbon actually stimulates the growth of what's called OEMs, or oil-eating microorganisms. And these are really powerful scavengers that will compete with the algae for nutrients. Now these organisms are usually only available in environments in trace, so by chucking these in here, um, this is going to really help compete with the algae and generally um, and chemically free um, clean up the water. So it's a very good idea, but just be aware that the hydrocarbon does eventually run out and then the nutrients um, do run out. So every three to six months, you do want to replace these if um, you do want to keep de-sludging and de-algeing your situation. So it's a very efficient, short-term, um, natural um, way of improving these sorts of situations. I'm scared that the pump has agitated um, nutrients in the bottom, which could be anoxic, therefore discharging hydrogen sulfide. I'm actually going to install some polyfilter, and what I'm going to do with this is put it in underneath the filter mat here. So there's the polyfilter. So I'm just going to pop it underneath here. And then um, if there is residual hydrogen sulfide in the water, then polyfilter does an amazing job at actually removing it and reducing the risk of the hydrogen sulfide killing the fish. So now is we have the second smaller gravel filter here, and then that's pumping up temporarily through this. Now eventually there's going to be a deck on here, so we want this properly fastened. And in a perfect world, this would get, be getting fastened, so it's going to aim that way. So it goes with the kinetic energy of the water. 
and if possible we'd like that to be breaking the surface as it pumps in because the filter is going to suck lots of oxygen out of the water and then we want the oxygen to be returned so in this case this is a very temporary arrangement so this is not a long-term arrangement because what i don't want is for that to fall out and go out um, that's not going to be good fun so um, this needs to be um, secured as soon as possible and what's happening now is the water from this section is now going through the filter and going into this section and then that's causing an overflow which is occurring right here at the moment so therefore the water in these two sections are going to be the same water there's also a super big pump that can get turned on um, to have the additional water feature and my big concern right now is that there's a filter there and there's a filter there and those filters are going to have to be cleaned very regularly until all the sludge in the pond is reduced now all of these floating plants too it's really important that they are never able to be introduced to a natural waterway because they cause trouble and also to make sure that once they populate too much you really need to get them out bury them um, and that's a good way of exporting nutrients out of the actual pond so the pond has much better surface agitation now that means the dissolved oxygen level of the water is going to increase if the dissolved oxygen level in the water increases that means the redox potential is going to increase the redox potential is how quickly the bacteria is able to oxidize the nutrients down which means the filters will also work more efficiently so regular water changes and monitoring the filters will be in order for some time so the more fish you have and the um, worse the quality of your food the more water changes you need to do less fish smaller fish better quality food is what makes the big difference now i'm starting a water change you can put the water down the drain but generally the water from the pond is actually very good for the garden so it's quite good just to um you can actually water the garden with the water from the pond it's like nice high nutrient water and the garden tends to love it so what i'm doing now is siphoning water out of this pond and i'm just going to use this gravel cleaner to go through the bottom and then i'm going to try and use this to remove as much solid waste out of the pond as possible obviously i can't do it with one hand and give it a bit of a vacuum now I just tested the water of this pond uh, ph is nice and alkaline which is good kh is four ammonia nitrite and nitrate is zero so the water quality as far as all of that is concerned is actually quite good um, this pond just needs a filter installed and the food reduced and a water change routine in place and a bit of patience and time and we should clear this pond up nicely now something you'll find very commonly is that if you don't have many fish in an environment to the fish that means danger so the fish will tend to hide there's not many of them because they feel like it's not safe also if the water quality is not good um, we definitely don't want rotting food or anything like that in there we never want to see food in the pond um, after 30 seconds after you fed the fish otherwise it does just rot away now if you improve the water quality get a filter on get the surface agitation going and then eventually get more fish then you'll find the fish will be a lot more active and you'll be a lot more interactive because in a nice healthy pond with plenty of fish you should find that when you approach the pond the fish will come up to greet you because they like being fed if you don't have many fish or if there's some other stress for the fish whether they're stressed due to water quality or if there's any other sort of stress then the fish will hide and not having many fish is actually a stress because it means danger if there's not many fish if you are doing a water change on your pond it's really important that you do use a water ager because you don't want chlorine and chloramone from your tap water killing off your good bacteria potentially killing your fish if you're just doing a tiny little top up and you don't use water ager it sort of isn't the end of the world if you um do a larger water change and you're taking water out and you're doing sort of 20 percent i would definitely add water ager now if you're going to do a decent sized water change um what most people do is let the pond fill up about five centimeters then they'll dose the whole pond with water ager the amount the whole pond will require um in the in a perfect world you'd actually have like a 20 liter bucket or something you'd fill up the bucket you add the water ager to the bucket and then put that into the water the water ager takes three seconds to work and it will just oxidize or sorry um to bond any chlorine and chloramine in the water that's in there instantly so you can't add the water ager and then add the water that doesn't work you've got to um, add the water ager to the full bucket of water so the very best way to add water is to pre-treat the water before you put it in the aquarium or pond but that's not a reality for most people with a big one so therefore they do the next best option which is fill the pond five centimeters and dose the whole pond then fill another five centimeters then dose the whole pond but you definitely don't want to not use water ager otherwise you're risking chlorine and risking chlorine um, can kill your good bacteria and potentially your fish and wreck your whole ecosystem